Hi, it's Carly here on the Muddy Path and today I'm outside in April, so that's awesome. And I'm going to be talking about how you can source good food. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so I did um, my series on the typical autism diets and if you haven't seen them, um, check them out. But I was thinking that perhaps maybe I should have said where you can source some local foods. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to find healthy food where you live. So I have about five different places that I would say um, you can try. And the first one would be to look at your local grocery store. Maybe it's not the grocery store that you're at, maybe it's a different one, but a lot of grocery stores today have a small section of the store um, to uh, natural foods or whole foods. And just maybe look there and see what's actually available as far as canned goods or um, dairy or even, even within the produce section, they may have a small area of it that has organic produce. So you could start there and um, and tying in with that, you may even find out that there may be a small little market store within your town or city that maybe you didn't know about. So do some little searches online and find out what's near you. For us, um, the two towns near us both have one and they're attached to a store that sells supplements. So you might want to look there and see if um, you can find the ours carry um, produce um, local if, when it's in season. Um, they carry canned goods. They also carry um, meat sourced locally. So it's a great place to start as well. The second place you can try would be a farmer's market. So there are more and more farmer's markets popping up. Um, maybe you have to drive for it, but maybe you only have to go to it once every couple of weeks. But going to a farmer's market, um, you're going to have the opportunity to see what's available in your area. Um, you can get to meet the farmer. Um, a lot of times it's them that are actually working the market. And um, you can even maybe get a farm tour, an open house. Sometimes they'll do that as well to invite people to see how they, um, they're practicing. Getting an organic status sometimes can be challenging. So there's a lot of great farmers out there that are, you know, have high, high standards, but they might not have um, a certifying body or, you know, they're in the process. So it's really great if you can go and support them and actually see where your, your food is coming from. The third one would be um, what we use a lot, which is a food co-op. So um, here in Ontario, there's a natural food co-op and then within that, there's a whole bunch of um, smaller um, local co-ops. Uh, we are um, a part of one where we pay yearly membership. I think it's $20, $25 a year. And then what it does is it's you're basically buying as a group and so the woman that runs it she's amazing and she's sourcing as well um, from so she gets like her canned goods and her grains um, from these larger distributors but when it comes to the produce and the um, the meat are usually very local and she's gone she's checked out the farms and the food that we get is super high quality and when you're being you're when you're able to buy in a, in a large like bulk flours, which gluten-free flours can be very expensive, or you're buying, um, we're a large family, so if we buy canned goods, we're buying them by the case. Um, it's kind of uh, um, cost-effective to do it that way. And um, it's great to meet other people with sort of similar mindset. Um, four would be to join a CSA, which a CSA is a community-supported agriculture and you're going to find more and more of those popping up. So if you look, um, they sometimes they're advertised um, at your local libraries um, or a local community center. And basically what it is is either a farmer or maybe a group of people that have rented land from a farmer. And they're growing um, a garden, a mass garden for um, a group of people and you're buying a share in advance. So you're basically paying for your produce before the season and you decide what size basket you, that you want and you're going to get, it will change um, from week to week depending on what's being harvested at that time. And for us it was really, um, um, we've done them in the past for several years 
And on one, it feels great to support local agriculture, but on the other hand, it really makes you aware of what is available, um, what you sort of should be eating for your for your area. So it's food that's not sat on trucks for you know weeks and weeks, and we were eating a, a bigger variety of foods that maybe um, we'd never heard of or never even tried. They're usually very helpful. They'll give you recipes and tips on how to um, use the food. Uh, and of course, the food is either harvested that morning or the day before. So you're getting amazingly fresh, high quality food. That kind of leads me into my number five, which would be to try and start your own garden. And I'm actually standing here in a garden that um, the girls and I like to work on. Uh, we started it small um, about three years ago. Uh, it was pretty much, uh, I don't know, if it was like five by five or six by six foot area and every year we've made it bigger and bigger. And it's been really fun. We like to start our seedlings. We're no experts by any means. A lot of times we start seedlings and they die before we can get them in the ground. Um, but some years we're more successful and it's just been really fun for the kids to um, just see the process and appreciate your food and even for Oscar to you know he likes the carrots and so when the carrots come and we're pulling them out of the ground he's right in there pulling them out you know maybe not even dusting them off and eating as fresh a carrot as you can get so we might do a few more videos on how that goes with the kids but uh, if not try and start a garden or if not you're gonna maybe try one of those other tips that I suggested so hopefully that information was helpful for you. Um, if you liked what you saw, then like, subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, make sure you leave them below. And we hope to see you again on the muddy path. Thanks for watching.